Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now what we have here is an AMD Fire Pro S10000. It's a professional dual GPU card from late 2012 that once cost $3,600. I paid just under £60, roughly $80 for this one on eBay 13 years later. Many would consider this card obsolete, especially for modern gaming, as it was never intended for that, but let's see if we can have some fun with it. I've got a couple of things planned for this video and hopefully all will work out as intended, but let's start with a look at the S10,000 itself. Architecturally, it's similar to the gaming-focused Radeon HD 7990. It has two 3GB Tahiti GPUs on a single board, requires two 8-pin power connectors, and has a 375W TDP. Unlike the 7990 though, which is more like two HD 7970s working together, the S10000 is more like two HD 7950s because of the reduced core count and clock speeds. The S10000 also relies on pro software drivers instead of adrenaline gaming drivers, and what a pain in the bum it was to get working. Windows 11 hates this card, so I installed Windows 10 on a secondary SSD for today's tests. Before I could even attempt to install the drivers myself, my screen went blank and when the display returned, I was met with AMD driver 15.11. Not really what I wanted because although the S10,000 hasn't received updates in years, we can still make use of newer drivers than this. At this point, Windows, MSI Afterburner and GPU-Z were detecting the card as a 3GB W8000 or two 3GB W8000s. The W8000 is another professional card, but it only exists in a 4GB variant. Weird. But it gets weirder. I did a clean uninstall of these drivers, disconnected from the internet and reinstalled the latest version of the Fire Pro software that would work on this OS. 17.4. After this, the card was being recognised as an S10,000 and both GPUs were detected. Perfect, right? Well, wait just a minute. I opened up GPU-Z yet again, which also correctly identified the card this time, but when I clicked the look up button, it took me to a page that said multiple devices found. Here, the S10,000 was listed, but so was this W9000X2. From what I can see, we're looking at identical specs, but the W9000X2 was never released. And then I saw it, this sticker. The S10,000 name has literally been stuck on the shroud, and sure enough, underneath it, it says W9000X2, the name of the apparently unreleased card. A bit of research took me to a forum where a user had found one of these, only their one said engineering sample next to the serial number on the label, and mine does not. I'm assuming that the S10,000 was originally going to be called the W9000X2, but this ended up being changed just before release, and AMD simply used the plastic shroud that they had already made and just stuck an S10,000 sticker over it. I don't know if all these cards have this, or maybe just the early ones and the name eventually got printed on the plastic, but if you do have one of these, please check it and let me know. My card shares a BIOS with the release cards from what I found, plus it had the sticker on it in the first place, so unfortunately it isn't an engineering sample, but it certainly confused me during the initial setup. So far, it's had like three different names as part of my PC alone, and later on in the video, it will be getting a fourth. With this thing all set up, finally, it was time to see if we could play games on it. This was rather short-lived, because I could not get the secondary GPU to work. Only one of the two GPUs on the board was actually being utilised. In fact, the other one was disabled altogether by default. There were no options to enable it from the driver software. If only we could get regular drivers running on it so that we could enable the second GPU. Well, why don't we try and do just that? Remember at the start I said this thing was a bit like the Radeon HD 7990, another dual GPU card, only one that was made with gaming in mind. If we could somehow transform this workstation card into said 7990, then surely we could play games with higher frame rates, at least in the ones that support multi-GPU configurations. 
Turns out I wasn't the first one to come up with this idea, which is great news as we have a guide to work from. I stumbled upon another forum, another tech power-up forum actually, which is where I first discovered all the engineering sample info. In this one, a user not only had success flashing their S10,000, but like an absolute legend, they had uploaded all the necessary files. Just to be safe, I backed up the BIOS files from both GPUs on my card using GPU-Z, and then, well, sort of haphazardly began the flashing process. Included in the uploaded folder were two BIOS ROM files, one for each GPU on the card, a master and a slave. Once I had used an included program, VBE7, to work out which GPU on the card was which, I then went a bit rogue deviating from the provided instructions. I opted for the less hands-on approach to flashing the card and used ATI WinFlash, an old program that I've played around with in the past. Interestingly, this will still detect the S10,000 as two W8,000s. I opened up the slave BIOS and flashed the secondary GPU first, the one that is not selected in this footage. I then did the same with the master BIOS for the primary GPU, which is what I'm doing in this footage. After this, I was prompted to restart my PC. Lo and behold, the PC fired up just fine, the drivers once again automatically installed, and we now have a Radeon HD 7900 series card, or an AMD Radeon 7990, albeit with slightly reduced specs, of course. It's a shame we can't download extra cores, but there we go. Please don't use this video as an actual guide, I was way too lax with my flashing attempt. I'll leave a link below to the tech power up forum because it is very helpful. At this point, we can of course install actual Radeon Relive gaming drivers. 22.6.1 seems to be the latest that this card supports. I had no issues whatsoever doing this, and once done, I confirmed that both GPUs were detected and that we could enable crossfire mode in supported games. Unfortunately, the new drivers still did nothing for the fans. The third fan in particular is spinning like a washing machine on its final spin cycle with pure vigor and determination. This is a noisy old beast, but hey, We've ended up with a card that can play games, supported ones anyway, using both GPUs, and thanks to better driver optimizations, we might see better performance when using a single GPU too. So let's take a look at our custom or bodged 7990 in action. Now I've got to be completely honest with you, I did not think I was going to get this to work. I don't know why I used ATI WinFlash, I think I just saw it as the easy option here and I thought hey if all goes wrong at least I've got a nice card to sit on the shelf anyway and a nice story to tell but I had read of some success elsewhere when using this program and I have used it before so I was pretty confident that I could get it working successfully. We'll start with Crisis here, I didn't do any exact benchmarking today for the aforementioned reasons. Um, but as you can see, we're getting well over 100 FPS at 1080p with the high settings. Both cards are being utilized, scales really well here actually, and there were no major issues to report. I tried to uh, set this log slide thing going. I've done this before where you push the logs down the hill, uh, but unfortunately I got the timing all wrong and the enemies managed to get out of the way. In terms of performance initially here, yeah, can't complain at all. Really nice. Just the noise. You need earplugs for this beast, but you could also jam the third fan with something, but you're going to see higher temperatures, so maybe not a good idea. I then tested Crisis 3, which also supports dual GPU mode. It didn't work quite as well here, with a few frame dips and drops. At first, I thought the game was capped to 65, but I turned VSync on and then off again, and this seemed to do the trick. There were moments where we saw spikes above 100 FPS, but it was a bit stuttery, and we could do with some customization from within the drivers, I think, a few tweaks here and there, and that's something that you are probably going to have to deal with anyway when using a multi-GPU setup, especially uh, when testing games that came out towards the end of support for such technology. Uh, games sort of got less and less optimised for Crossfire or SLI until it was phased out altogether. So you may experience a few issues and sometimes you might find that just leaving it disabled anyway is the best option. 
Grand Theft Auto 5, the original version or legacy release, also seems to support a multi-GPU mode with some slowdown here and there. I left everything at the default profile. There were a few different uh, crossfire options to select, but some of them caused horrible flickering. This one, even in default mode, did cause flickering with the MSI afterburner overlay. There are some moments whereby the frame rate started to feel really juddery. So it's not the best game to test with Crossfire. One of my all time favorites is Mafia 2 and with the absolute high settings with Crossfire enabled, well, it's running really nicely, over 150 FPS most of the time, to be honest, both GPUs are being utilized here, running at 950 megahertz a piece here. And yeah, can't complain about the performance here at all. I apologize if I start to lose my voice. I've had this cold for weeks now and it is a bit of a struggle speaking for longer than 10 minutes at a time, but I think that's sort of what kept me going in terms of getting this card to work, just pure determination and the fact that I don't feel like doing anything else. So I've just sat at the computer for a couple of days trying to get this to work and I think my work paid off here and uh, this certainly turned out to be a fun experiment, especially when older games like this are running really nicely. Mafia 2 is fantastic in my opinion. If you haven't played it, I definitely recommend it and as you can see it runs well on all manner of hardware. I want to play a few games that don't actually support Crossfire, um, modern ones as well, like Ark Raiders here, in which we were able to get 30 frames per second plus, just about. You're going to find that with any 7000 series AMD GPU, you'll either get a driver warning, your game might not run at all, or if it does, you might experience a little bit of slowdown here and there, and you'll likely be limited to lower settings. At 1080p with 70% scale and the lowest settings in ARC here, well, we were getting at least 40 FPS a lot of the time. We have that similar issue that we've seen with other cards, uh, modern low-end cards, whereby the textures don't all really load in, and you're going to be left with a few sort of... Uh, blurry bits here and there as you can see the trees are sort of popping in last minute better than the attempt that the 1030 made a couple of days ago at least the trees are popping in eventually but yeah just bear that in mind absolutely no complaints in cs2 i did read something online someone was saying that it did work in cs2 crossfire but i couldn't get it to i tried a few different profiles here a few different tweaks but nothing i did would actually get both gpus running with full utilization. In fact, the secondary card just stuck at 0% uh, with a 300 megahertz minimum clock throughout the entirety of the tests. So not even a twinge from it, nothing here at all in terms of utilization, but even with a single GPU, it's running quite nicely with over 100 FPS. I was surprised to find that Cyberpunk 2077 also ran with at least 30 frames per second. We're using the lowest settings with FSR 2.1 Ultra performance, so it does look a bit blurry here and there. Could you play it long term on a GPU like this? I don't think so. I think you'd be better off implementing a 30 FPS cap to start with, and even then, there are going to be moments where you see uh, low 20s in terms of a frame rate too, but... The 7990 or the S10,000 is certainly trying its best, and that's all we can ask of this older hardware. But there we have it. This card is going to go on my shelf along with my other rare slash interesting GPUs. I don't think this is particularly rare in the traditional sense. I think it's just harder to find these days. It's pretty scarce, at least at this price point, 60 quid here in the UK. I just find it fascinating and I think other enthusiasts would too. If you're looking for one of these, don't expect much in 2025 in terms of gaming, but it's certainly fun to tinker about with. And uh, we've sort of got like four GPUs in one. We've got an S10,000, a W8000, an HD7990 and a W9000X2. So it's not just a dual GPU card, it's like a four-in-one old beast, and it's certainly been fun to mess around with. This has been one of my favourite videos, I think, to make. Um, I love finding these older and lesser-known cards, and as always, I hope you've enjoyed watching as well. So thank you very much, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to, of course, and I'll see you all next time.